Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we've got a special one. We're going over the Cornef Audio Amplified Instrument Processor. Cornef Audio has already put out a few really fantastic and tweakable plugins, the Pawn Shop Compressor and the Pawn Shop Compressor 2, as well as the Talkback Limiter based on the SSL Talkback Compressor. With all Cornef Audio plugins, you're able to actually dive into the analog components that were used to build the predecessors of these plugins. Now we have a new one from Cornef Audio. That's the Amplified Instrument Processor. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look. So here we go. This is the Cornef Audio Amplified Instrument Processor. And first, let's go over all of the controls because it does seem like a lot, but when you break it down, there's a few things going on that we're all familiar with and some that maybe you're not. Let's start at the top and we have our EQ section here. We have a four band parametric EQ with individual enable switches. So each one of these bands can be turned on or off at the click of a button. Each EQ control and its frequency knob is into a selected area. So low frequency, low mids, high mids, etc., etc. On top of this, in the middle, is your first order filter section with a low pass and high pass filter. And you're also able to turn this on or off outside of the EQ section. Underneath that is the analog channel variance. This allows for sonic differences between the left and right channels of this plugin. And there are 16 channels to choose from. By default, it comes up as these, but you can go ahead and hit the random button and it really will just randomize the channels and the EQ curves of those channels. There is some more to the EQ section on the back of the compressor, and we'll get into that when we're there. Up next is the VCA compressor, and this is somewhere between an SSL style compressor and a DBX160 style. It has all of your basic compressor functions, attack and release times, threshold, ratio, and your makeup gain down here. Now, you can also change the location of the compression within your circuit with the pre and post switches here. By default, it comes up as post, putting it towards the end of the chain. If you hit pre, it's gonna put it before the EQ and its own individual enable button here. In the center here, you'll have your stereo spread scope. This is something you've probably seen on some old consoles or just in your scope plugins within your DAW. It'll show you your left right spread as well as your mono spread and whether you're more into the stereo field or more mono. Underneath that is a stereo width adjustment just by pushing towards ultra wide, or you can suck them into mono by going to the left. Above the scope and the stereo width is the Cornef Audio proprietary signal processor. This does a few different things that helps Dan and the guys over at Cornef Audio actually bring their guitars a little bit more forward and to life. And you have just one switch for this, on or off. There are more controls on the back, which allows you to adjust it a little bit, but this is kind of the secret sauce for them. Then on the right is the insufferable mid-range filter. I just love that name. This allows you to kind of hone in on those frequencies that really kind of squeak out for you for big electric guitars. It's the really annoying high pitch ones. And this is just a notch filter to find those and get rid of them. Also, your octave range allows you to actually add your harmonics in so that you can refine the sound even more. The frequency selector here allows you to adjust where your insufferable mid-range is, and then the reduction is how much it's actually taking out when the unit is enabled down here. You also have an option of listening to the insufferable mid-range filter by hitting the listen button here. In between is the high frequency compensation, which is also set to the same frequency, but it adds a nice top end shimmer to your signal without adding any of that extra harshness that you just took away. Then down on bottom is a new feature for Cornef Audio plugins, and it's the main section. You have your input and output trim knobs, you have your preset browser, you have the ability to A and B different settings that you have, and you're able to undo and redo some of your settings as well. You can also access the manual from here. Now that we've gone over the front panel, let's dive underneath the hood, like you can do with all Cornef Audio plugins. Here is the backside of the amplified instrument processor. Up on top is your EQ representation graph. 
To the left is the frequency dependent reduction section. This is actually meant for the low mids of some chugging guitars. When you chug your guitar, you may have a big buildup of low mids. This will allow you to find where that buildup of frequency is and just listen to it and reduce it down whenever you're getting into some heavy chugs. Then when you're back into open chords or screaming solos, this won't do anything because there's no reduction going on. It's listening for those big woofs of low mids that you can go in and refine with the frequency selector here and adjust it to the bandwidth. And it'll allow you to just tame those chugs a bit, but still leave the low mids of your guitar there. To the right of the EQ graph is the equalizer characteristics. By default, it will start on the modern style, but if you want, you can actually change it to vintage, which works more like a passive EQ. You're also able to adjust the gain scale for the EQ section. If you on the other side are adding 6 dB, you can increase the gain scale, and now you're adding 12 dB. Then you also have the circuit age control over here. New works as if this is a brand new piece of hardware. It hasn't been sitting in studios for 30 plus years and it just sounds pristine and works the way it should. Now, when we roll back to old, we get more of a rippling analog effect that really kind of brings the EQ to life. And you're able to go anywhere in between old and new. This way you can blend it to your taste. Then the last control on top is the curve invert, which does exactly like it sounds. If you're adding 12 dB of 2K and you hit curve invert, you're now taking away 12 dB at 2K. This is a global function for the entire EQ. And you'll see that in a little bit. We'll pull up some EQs and we'll invert it. Underneath that is the backside of the proprietary signal processor module, which actually gives us three different tone shapes and the transient response. First, let's go with the tone shapes. Number one is nice and warm and round, where number two has an extended low end and a nice top end to it as well. And number three is a very mid forward kind of sound. Then the transient response control here goes from bright to dark and it alters kind of the tone of these three different settings you have here. It really is something we're going to play with when we get into it. Then in the center, you have your user interface scalability. I have it increased now so we can see it a little better. You have an optional oversampling button and a blend knob between your wet and dry. Right now we're at 100% wet, which is the default. Now that we've gone over all of the controls, we can see that it's really the stuff we would use anyway, EQ, compression, maybe a little saturation, uh, definitely some notch filters to get rid of some of those squeaky high gain guitar sounds. But we've only been talking about it. Let's listen to what this thing can actually do.
so within a few clicks you're able to really refine your heavy guitar sound. You could use this on clean guitars too, and you don't need to use every module. You can go in and pick and choose which ones you want to use, and use and abuse them however you wish. This is an immensely powerful tool that anyone who mixes any kind of guitars, whether it be mic'd up amps in a room or using guitar amp sims, this will still work for your guitars and will really help you dial in to get the sound just right for that mix. Head over to cornfaudio.com and pick up your copy of the Amplified Instrument Processor. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.